it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce uh, Jason Zander. He's Executive Vice President at Microsoft, where he reports directly to Satya Nadella as a member of the company's senior leadership team. He leads Microsoft's global division that's focused on next generation technology solutions. This includes AI engineering and research to accelerate scientific discovery. And it also includes industry leading quantum computing focused on solving problems impossible to unlock today. He also serves as the chief technical advisor of Tidal Town Tech, which is a partnership between the Green Bay Packers and Microsoft investing in regional early stage startup companies. With that, would you please welcome Jason Zander to the stage. Gotta wait for the walk in music. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, very happy to be here. It's exciting to be at a conference where we can uh, delve deep into such a deep topic area like quantum computing. And, and the great thing is that we're so much good consistency now. If we think about what problems we can solve, I think we're all getting to the same set of really great ideas. Coming up with new systems of energy and storage, electricity, improving farming, feeding the planet, super important, and also being able to figure out new materials, chemistry, material science, et cetera. It's great, we're landing on a great spot. I wanna talk a little bit about how we're going to accomplish that. But what's really exciting, why does quantum computing work? I've been doing this for a lot of time, built out public clouds and massive kind of scale. But quantum computing, as we've heard from other speakers here, can do things that we simply cannot do in any other ways. In fact, if you think about the number of possible stable molecules, it would surpass the number of atoms in the visible universe. That means even the largest supercomputers, and I've built many big supercomputers, including the ones that have all running all ChatGPT and our train stuff at Microsoft, we still need a quantum computer to get this kind of acceleration. That's why it's so important that we actually move forward on this technology. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, the future for quantum computing is going to be hybrid applications. Even your laptop that you have today, you've got a CPU, it's got a GPU, and now it has an NPU, it's running AI algorithms natively. Certain of those are accelerators. GPUs are great for the graphics, NPUs do AI. I have those things together. It turns out that our future is gonna be hybrid compute architecture as well. It's gonna be this combination of running AI at scale plus reliable quantum as well as advanced supercomputing, HPC in the classic sense. AI gives us the ability to do fast and rapid screening to figure out brand new candidates and things that we can go do. It's very good at that. It turns out though that quantum computing with that ability to do that massive solution space and figure out candidates is even better at accelerating those sorts of calculations. It's an accelerator that goes with, but we still need HPC. HPC is important because quantum computers will explore this massive space, they'll come out with candidates. We still wanna screen those candidates. We wanna do simulations, we wanna see which ones actually work. So this future is hybrid applications all up. Now, let's talk about AI because this is a super exciting area that Microsoft has invested very heavily in. And we've done a lot of this work even in areas not just generative AI uh, and things like Copilot and things like that, but also in the area of molecular science. We have graph neural nets and things that can actually do amazing amount of work. And we take a huge amount of data, we train that, and we create classic models that I can run inference on. We actually used this technology about nine months ago. We ran through 32.6 million possible elements in the periodic chart and came away with a new solid state battery that uses 70% less lithium. And that only took us 80 hours to compute with classic AI, which is pretty amazing. The problem is that AI is still just doing approximations based on properties. As we add quantum computing into the mix, we now have the ability to actually go do orbital simulations of electrons. I mean, imagine this, going down to the atomic level and trying to figure out exactly why do things work the way they do. Here's the cool thing. We can actually take that data, fold it back into the training set, and come away with these new models that are actually hyper accurate. And now we're no longer having to guess on filtering, but we can actually understand precisely why and create recipes for how to actually do that work. That's super exciting. And I think for the quantum field, the other thing that's interesting 
is it pulls in the time frame where quantum computing is going to be relevant in these kinds of industries. Because we don't have to wait for an entire really large computer to do it all, we can actually take some of the data and combine it with high-scale AI today and actually work faster. But we're going to need reliable qubits in order to be able to do that. Noisy qubits aren't going to cut it because they simply cannot run the same circuit depth. They kind of decohere and they run out of gas. So there's three things you have to do for a reliable qubit. First, you have to be able to detect errors. Next, you have to be able to correct them. And third, you have to be able to compute with them. Detect, correct, and compute. You have to do all three. There's a lot of research going on. Some of them only do the first. Some of them will do the second, but not compute. We need to have all three. And when we have all three, then we have reliable logical qubits. And that's what we're working on. When you get to scale, now we can start to show this advantage. Up to 40 qubits, we can simulate. We have simulators. We wrote one 10 years ago. You can actually do the same thing. I can use a supercomputer, run a quantum simulator like it was a computer, and get answers. When I get to 50, now all of a sudden, I have an advantage. That advantage means I can start to actually do work you cannot do on a classical computer. And you can't do on a NISC-only machine. You can't just use noisy qubits. You, know, you get too much errors. It's just not going to work. That's at 50. When I get off to 100, now all of a sudden we get scientific advantage. We're going to be able to use that accuracy to do things like researching quantum magnets and underlying structures of quantum mechanics, which gets super, super interesting. And we're going to be able to start getting some of that same chemistry data that I mentioned. Some of the basic stuff will come in. When I get up to 1,000, now we have industrial quantum advantage. We can now add catalysis. We can do deep levels of computational chemistry work, combine those things together, massive levels of work. Again, you need reliable qubits to be able to pull that off. Now, we've built the world's first reliable quantum platform with Azure Quantum. That is our goal. We're giving you everything from co-pilots that help you write code uh, using the latest in generative AI, all the tools, the compilers, the work that's required for that, and then also the Azure Quantum Compute Platform. And the Compute Platform is designed to work with multiple partners. We're building a chip, others are building a chip, and we have great partnerships with that. We want them all to work very well, but it has to be a full stack solution. And we do welcome all partners to that kind of a platform. And so today we're excited to announce two uh, new things that have come up the first time here at Quantum World Congress. The first one is our partnership with Quantinuum. And as Raj mentions, back in April, we actually demonstrated four logical qubits with higher fidelity rates and error correction that beat anything that's in the physical qubit space. Today we're announcing we actually have 12 of those logical qubits. Just five months later, we've gone up to 12. And this represents the largest number of entangled qubits with this system out there today. And we've actually used it to go run a chemistry circuit on the computer. It's a real computer. It exists. It's there. We're running it. Not hypothetical. In addition to that, we're also announcing a further partnership with Atom Computing, in this case, Neutral Atom System. This particular system that we're working on is a new collaboration that we have, running logical qubits with the logical qubit stack that we have and adding reliable quantum computation. And one of the key things we're doing is introducing a discovery suite the discovery suite means that we're combining the power of AI, the power of HPC, and real quantum computers all together in one offering. So I can actually get immediate value out of the systems. And as the quantum systems scale and grow, we get more and more qubits, we can solve more and more problems. So we're very excited about those partnerships. I want to go into more detail on this, and I'm going to introduce my colleague, Dr. Chris Desforte, technical fellow at Microsoft and part of the Azure Quantum Program. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Jason. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be back here at Quantum World Congress today. And today, I can say we have entered the era of reliable quantum computing. Last year, when I stood on this stage, we were not there yet. The two announcements Jason just shared, I do believe now we are in the era of reliable quantum computing. And for us, these two announcements hinge on the Azure Quantum Compute Platform. It's within this compute platform that we are lighting up logical qubits for QPUs, for Quantinuum, and for Atom Computing. And these logical qubits come from our qubit virtualization system that we've developed at Microsoft and tailored to different quantum hardware platforms. 
And so today I want to share more of the details of how we're using these logical qubits to bring us into the era of scientific quantum advantage that is coming. First, with Quantinuum, in April we shared we had four logical qubits together on their H2 system. And now, just five months later, we have three times more logical qubits using less than two times more physical qubits. This brings us to the most reliable logical qubits on record. They've been entangled, and they have the highest fidelity on record. Not only that, we need to go beyond correction and enter computation. We need to be able to compute reliably. And so with Quantinuum also using these logical qubits on the H2 ion trap system from Quantinuum, we have also achieved a combination of fault tolerant error correction and computation together. And we are able to do this repeatedly without, but better than the physical qubits alone. And so this really brings about improved logical qubits with fault tolerant computation. And it's over an order of magnitude better than the physical qubits. Now with that, we can employ logical qubits within a hybrid application and a hybrid platform. As Jason mentioned, Azure Quantum is a hybrid platform that brings together HPC, reliable quantum computing, and artificial intelligence. And for the first time, we have demonstrated an end-to-end -end workflow that brings all three of these compute modes together. And we've done this for a problem in catalysis, right? Catalysis, when you're looking for a new novel hypothetical catalyst, it requires a lot of computation. And traditionally, this has been a lot of classical computation. Well, here we've studied a chiral reaction. This is where we want to understand chirality. These are mirror image molecules. Think of a pair. One pair tends to have, say, left-handedness and the other right-handedness. And it turns out the handedness can either result, for example, in drug synthesis for a therapeutic capability or a harmful capability. So indeed, you want to understand chirality to enable a catalyst to drive a reaction to the chirality you want, right? Especially for drug synthesis, to that therapeutic capability. Now, you need very accurate estimates of energies in the active spaces of some of these configurations. And that's where quantum computing comes in. Not just quantum computing, but reliable quantum computing. So we've taken a problem and combined Azure HPC, where we use the high-performance compute to explore the reaction network, understand these configurations, and then ultimately identify the active space uh, configurations that require strong correlations in the electrons. When you have these strongly correlated electrons, we then need the quantum computer as it scales up and becomes more reliable to identify very accurate energy estimates along with an AI model. And so we've taken this exploration from Azure HPC and the identification of active spaces, and we've then fed this to a quantum algorithm that sets up a quantum circuit on logical qubits to prepare the ground state, right, a state representing the quantum properties. We then measure this state, producing classical data, and we use that classical data to train an AI model. Now, this is a first example of an end-to-end -end workflow across HPC, logical qubits, and AI. But we also find that it's the reliable quantum computing that gets it right here. So we've ran the, the demonstration both with physical qubits and logical qubits, and we find that the logical qubits do better. Right? They get it right. They, in fact, sample the true ground state energy. And we can achieve this, we can check this, because in this case, this, this simulation can also be done classically. Again, it's a proof of concept demonstration. But as things scale up, this demonstration provides evidence of the emerging usefulness of quantum classical hybrid computing for chemistry. And it offers an example of how HPC, AI, and reliable quantum computation can be used collectively to solve scientific problems. 
This is the application of the future that we can get started on right now. I'd like to dive into the other announcement around atom computing, again, with a focus on enabling logical qubits and reliable quantum computation. So together with atom computing, we are bringing together neutral atom technology with leading qubit virtualization capabilities from Microsoft. Together we are building a reliable quantum machine. And we take advantage, we co-design, we co-build a system that takes atomic nuclear spin qubits, the ability to move them around, and then use that for better logical qubit properties, right? We can use this for advanced qubit virtualization that we tailor to the Atom hardware and its capabilities. And this enables us to light up logical qubits and more of them, right? The system is upgradable and has components that we can upgrade both at the hardware and the software level over time. So with Atom Computing, this platform, right, this machine will be integrated into, into the Azure Quantum Compute platform with its logical qubits. And we're also excited to be offering a commercial discovery suite that offers the combination of HPC, AI, and this reliable quantum machine coming from Microsoft and Atom Computing. Now, I'm thrilled to share that we've already generated logical qubits between Atom Computing and the qubit virtualization system from Microsoft. So we have logical qubits in, a neutral, in this neutral Atom platform today. And we'll continue to upgrade this to achieve scientific quantum advantage. With these logical qubits we have today, we will be upgrading and taking advantage of the next generation of system that Atom Computing is building that will have over 1,000 physical qubits. And with more than 1,000 physical qubits, we will be creating 50, more than 50 logical qubits, upgrading the system to achieve 100 logical qubits, again, at the point where we can achieve scientific quantum advantage. That's a point at which we can get a solution from having a quantum machine, a reliable quantum machine in the mix among HPC and AI that we can't otherwise get classically alone. We will then scale to beyond 100 logical qubits as the system, the underlying number of physical qubits, continues to be upgraded and become more and better. We're thrilled to be on this journey together with Atom Computing to reach scientific quantum advantage and to be on this journey with the rest of our Azure Quantum Compute platform partners as well. So I hope that you join us on this journey to scientific quantum advantage. Later today, you can join us for sessions between Microsoft and Atom Computing, as well as Microsoft and Quantinuum. Thank you very much, and welcome to the era of reliable quantum computing.